Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover multiplying decimals. We'll take a look at multiplying decimals by decimals and then also multiplying whole numbers and decimals. So we will have a good mixture of problems here. We'll start with decimals by decimals. Let's jump into number one, where we have 93 hundredths times eight tenths. Now, the first thing we need to do whenever we have a multiplication problem involving decimals, well, we remove any decimals, then we multiply, and lastly, we place the decimal in our answer. So for number one, let's remove the decimals and set up the problem. So we have 93 times eight. Now we multiply. Eight times three gives us 24. And then we have eight times nine, which is 72, plus two is 74. So we end up with 744. Now we need to place the decimal in that answer. And we do that by looking back at the original problem and seeing how many decimal digits we have. So how many digits are to the right of a decimal? Well, this nine is one, this three is two, and this eight is three. We have three decimal digits. That means our answer needs three decimal digits, three digits to the right of the decimal. So one, two, three. Our decimal goes to the left of the seven. So our answer is 744 thousandths, 0.744. So let's write this as 0 0.744. Again, 744 thousandths. And when I rewrote that answer, I put a zero in the ones place. That zero in the ones place makes it clear we have a decimal point here and we don't have any whole numbers. That zero helps us see the decimal point. That way we don't overlook the decimal and think this is 744. So something to keep in mind when working with decimals. Let's move on to number two, where we have 15 and 5 tenths times three and seven tenths. Let's remove any decimals and set this up. So we have 155 times 37. Now we multiply. Seven times five is 35. Seven times five is 35, plus that three is 38. And then seven times one is seven, plus three is 10. We are done with this seven and these threes. We are moving to the place to the left, that three there, so we need our placeholder zero. Now we multiply three times five. That gives us 15. Now we have three times five again, plus that one is 16, and then three times one is three, plus one is four. And now we add five plus zero is five, Eight plus five is 13, and then one plus zero is one, plus six is seven, and one plus four is five. So we end up with 5,735, but we need to place the decimal. So let's look at the original problem and see how many decimal digits we have. How many digits are to the right of a decimal? Well, this five is one, and this seven is two. So our answer needs two decimal digits. One digit, two digits. So the decimal goes in between the seven and the three. This is our answer, 57 and 35 hundredths. So let's write this up here. And we are done with number two. Lastly, let's move on to number three, where we have six tenths times two hundredths. Now for this example, the multiplication isn't going to be too complicated, but we need to be careful when placing the decimal. So let's start by removing any decimals. And we just have six times two. Now let's multiply six times two 
is 12. So we end up with 12 and now we need to place the decimal. So looking back at the original problem, we have one, two, yes, we count that zero, three decimal digits. That means our answer needs three decimal digits. So we have one digit, two digits, three digits. We need a placeholder zero here in the tenths place and our decimal goes to the left of that zero. So now we have three decimal digits in our answer. And this is our final answer, 12 thousandths. So let's rewrite this up top as 0 0.012. So 12 thousandths. So there are our examples for multiplying decimals by decimals. Let's move on to decimals and whole numbers. Here's our section on multiplying whole numbers and decimals. And this will be the same process we just used. We just have whole numbers involved now. Let's jump into number one, where we have eight times four tenths. So the first thing that we need to do is remove any decimals. So we're going to rewrite this problem as eight times four. Now our second step is to multiply. Eight times four gives us 32. And now lastly, our third step, we place the decimal in our answer. So how many digits are to the right of a decimal? Looking at the original problem, well, we have one, this four right here. So our answer needs one decimal digit as well, one digit to the right of the decimal. So one digit and the decimal goes in between the three and the two. So this is our final answer, three and two tenths. So let's write this up here. Eight times four tenths equals three and two tenths. Moving on to number two, we have 16 times five and 72 hundredths. Our first step, remove any decimals. So let's rewrite this as 572 times 16. And I'm writing 572 on top here because it has three digits and 16 has two digits. I find it easier to set up and work through a multiplication problem when the number with more digits is on top. Remember, multiplication is commutative, so order doesn't change the answer. We get the same answer either way. Think about it, two times five is 10, and five times two is 10. So we're not impacting the answer at all by doing this. So now we multiply. We'll start with six times two. That's 12. Then we have six times seven. That's 42 plus one is 43. And then we have six times five, which is 30 plus four is 34. We are done with this six, the one and the four. We are moving over a place to the left to the one. So we need our placeholder zero here. And now we have one times two, which is two, then one times seven is seven, and one times five is five. Now we add two plus zero is two, three plus two is five, four plus seven is 11, and then one plus three is four, plus five is nine. So we end up with 9,152. But this isn't our final answer. We need to place the decimal. So looking back at the original problem, how many decimal digits do we have? One, two. So our answer needs two. One, two. The decimal goes in between the one and the five. Our final answer, 91 and 52 hundredths. So 16 times five and 72 hundredths equals 91 and 52 hundredths. Now let's move on to number three. We have seven and 905 thousandths times three. 
let's remove any decimals. So we have 7,905 times three. Now we multiply. Three times five is 15. Three times zero is zero, plus one is one. Three times nine, 27. And then three times seven is 21, plus two is 23. So we end up with 23,715. But we need to place the decimal. Looking back at the original problem, we have one, two, three digits to the right of a decimal. So our answer needs the same, one digit, two digits, three digits. So the decimal goes in between the three and the seven. Our final answer, 23 and 715 thousandths. So seven and 905 thousandths times three equals 23 and 715 thousandths. So there you have it. There's how to solve multiplication problems involving decimals. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.